Welcome back to Unlocking Your Creative Curiosity with Tammy Collins, where we explore, experiment, evolve, express, and evoke our creativity. We're jumping into our creative exploration with a new experiment around leaves. Here's a little sneak peek at what's coming today in this video. Okay, so here we are with our prepped, taped paper. Uh, this is a heavyweight mixed media paper. Um, it is by Bristol, and I got it at Hobby Lobby in a tablet. Hobby Lobby always runs a, a half off sale, so when they do that, I grab a bunch of tablets. So um, we're still moving forward with the experiment of leaves. I'm just trying to, I had an inclination that I wanted to do something with leaves. I really didn't know what that was or what it meant. So I'm just kind of going with the flow here to see and learn about how the medium works in different applications. So um, from the first experiment, we used Mod Podge to glue them down and that wasn't very successful. So now I'm using something that's more, um, it, it, I'm using a stick glue. It's very heavy bodied, so it helps with the um, rippled texture of the leaf. It dries super quick, so we're getting something down and getting it stuck pretty quickly. Um, I actually really like how this works. I don't know how it will hold up. I would really prefer to get a, um, a really good uh, tacky um, glue. I just don't happen to have any on hand. And, you know, as you know around here, things are perfectly imperfect. We go with what we have. We make what we have work. I don't let things like not having an item keep me from doing creation. So I'm playing with composition. I do have a tendency, I notice, to do things in groupings of threes. Um, I think it creates a nice balance. It makes a nice composition. You know, when you're, when you're trying to get an aesthetically pleasing composition, you want your eye to sort of flow around and have a focal point. And I think having things in threes creates almost like a triangle, if you will, and it helps uh, with an, a very pleasing aesthetic and composition. So now I'm just using a piece of parchment paper to put over top of it because it's waxy and it won't really stick to the leaves, or at least that's what I think. <laughs> and then I'm using that to really press down the, the leaves into the glue that I put on. Uh, now, I had grabbed this tacky glue at the Dollar General because I wanted some and they had it, so I grabbed it. I'm really not happy with this. Um, as you see here, it's really frustrating to use. It's, it's an extremely thick, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really thick bodied, like you can't even squeeze it out of the tube. So then I open the cap and I start trying to stick it on with a paintbrush. It's just not really going that well. It, um, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably would, it could be this brand of tacky glue. So I still would like to try this with different glue. So, so you're going to see me fuss here for a little bit, trying to figure out how to make this glue work. Um, you know, and just trying to get it into areas that I'm trying to get stuck down and, you know, it just doesn't really work. But it's what I have on hand, and so now I'm going with it. It is what it is. I really enjoy working with the leaves. It's um, it's an interesting experiment. You know, they they're dry and brittle. Um, I wonder if there's some sort of treatment that I could put on them that would make them a little more malleable and less brittle. So we're going to um, switch over to Mod Podge. I'm very close to being out. So see, you're going to see here this sticky stuff is really a pain because now it sticks to the parchment paper. It's really just a mess, but we're going to keep going. So my next goal here is I have some of the tissue paper um, products that we did from the tissue paper experiment and they have, you know, beautiful coloring and I want to incorporate those. So we're going to put a little Mod Podge on these leaves to seal them and then we're going to move into adding uh, tissue paper.
But again, you know, I really have no idea where this is going. My only concept was that I wanted to use these leaves. I wanted to use some of this tissue paper. And that's really all I had in my mind that I was doing. Um, so at this point, you know, I'm just trying to get these leaves down and see where we're going to go from here. Do you have a, a favorite glue that that you like to use that would that works in almost any situation? Um, you know, I love Mod Podge, but I really don't like the Mod Podge is very sticky afterwards. Uh, but other than that, it's it's a pretty good um, medium. I do like matte medium. I do use matte medium a lot. Um, that works for certain circumstances, but it doesn't really seal super well. Um, I don't know if you've got something great let me know all right so I'm, I'm pulling all my um, tissue paper pieces I'm ripping them and trying to figure out how I want to put them in here and so I'm almost out of this so I'm really pushing this uh, <laughs> I live in a somewhat remote location, so for me to go get somewhere like uh, Hobby Lobby or Walmart or anything of the, that nature, I've got a, a good 45-minute drive, uh, which is fine, but I'm not going to just run out to grab glue. So I'll just put it on my list, and when I go in I, to town, go into town, I will grab some. You may be hearing an airplane right now. I live over a river. There's a, a, a little airport down the river, so small planes will fly right past the house here and go down the river. It's actually really beautiful. I'm not sure how close he is. <laughs> oh, he's taken off. Yep. Okay, so we're just um, putting in the uh, tissue paper here. Um, if you haven't been here, then uh, the reason that you're hearing the sound and I'm not editing the sound out is because I'm trying to do things as in real time as possible. So much so that I'm not even doing the audio when I'm making the piece. When I try to record or try to talk while I'm creating, it really hurts both pieces. It hurts the creation side because I'm thinking more about what I need to say to you or what I'm trying to say and then I can't think about the creation and vice versa when I'm trying to create I can't think about what I'm trying to say to you. So it's really just a big mess and actually it was a big piece of why I didn't do these videos earlier on until I realized that let me just record them and come back and do the audio over top and what a difference. I really enjoy this process now. I really love that I can actually see what I'm creating. Um, I can talk more about what I was doing and what I was thinking. It's really just a game changer in the way that this process goes for me and I think for you as the user. I think you it's difficult to create intuitively and try to talk about it at the same time because I just don't think those things work very well <laughs> together. At least not for me. It's a, quite a challenge. So now I'm using a second tissue paper. Um, you can see I did the three thing again. I didn't even think about the three thing. I think I just do it intuitively. The first pieces of tissue paper that I put on there, I put on there in chunks of three. And so now I have three chunks of leaves and three chunks of that tissue paper. And now I'm just using this other tissue paper, which is a little less um, decorative. And I'm using that to fill the voids and sort of give a layer around the, the other pieces. And so because we do things sort of live, there will be some sort of, you know, d dead audio time. I don't think that it's necessary for me to talk nonstop. I think that would drive you crazy. I also don't think that um, having an audio in the background like a music is is really pleasing. And truth be told, I listen to music most times when I'm creating and I can't actually record that because that would be copyright issues. So so you see that it would be a 
you know, awkward thing. So I just like to talk freely. And if that means there's some quiet time, there's some quiet time. You, you can just enjoy the, the creation and, and watch what's happening. I do try to keep my creative time to around an hour block of time. Um, sometimes that gets really broken up. So, for example, in this particular creation piece, after the tissue paper is on here, this will have to dry for a very significant amount of time. So I will stop the video, let it dry, and then begin recording again. So there will be a, a, an edit transition in the video. Um, so I can't be, you know, real time as real time can possibly be. Um, I just don't want these to be overly produced, um, having to do a ton of edits or hire someone out to do the edits just really is not where I wanted this to go. I want this to be almost more of like a, just m capturing my creative, I, I create daily and I just wanted to capture those and share those. Will they get better with time? Probably. I think the light's really bad here, but um, we'll get it taken care of. So right now I'm just thinking. I've got a bunch of things laying around me from previous experiments trying to think, do I want to use those? Do I not want to use those? What's happening? I think I'm, I'm deciding that I'm done with that. Yep, so we took it over to dry and it has uh, dried for a while. It's good and dry now. So now I'm, what's next? Well, this is something, one of my staple things I love to do. I'm using my non-dominant hand. I'm using my left hand and I'm just putting in these random um, like squiggly lines. I call them electric. And I'm just putting those in. Just want them all over. And so now I'm switching to my right hand to add in a few more. For me, this is what I call intuitive doodling. I'm just letting whatever happens, happens. So now I'm going to come back in. I'm going to um, round off any of the corners. I'm going to um, darken the lines a little bit and just finish out that process. This is very meditative. It's very therapeutic. It really helps with stress and anxiety. If you're looking for a creative process that can help you just sort of unwind and relax, you know, this intuitive doodling is a really great place to go. I would keep a little journal and just open the page and just doodle away. And you can just literally just scribble in lines just like you saw me do here. You can use your non-dominant hand, which is really fun because then you really can't think too much about it. And then just come back and fill in the spaces. And uh, if you want more spaces to fill in, add some more lines. What I'm always trying to accomplish in my mixed media pieces is I'm trying to uh, accomplish depth. I want you to feel pulled into the piece. And so some of the things I'm doing, I'm doing deliberately to create a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer that sort of makes you feel pulled in. And I don't know how well I always execute this, but this is one of the things I'm trying to practice um, in my 
in my creativity. And of course, that's more of a something that you evolve into when you're just beginning your creative practice. You don't want to worry too much about all those things. But if you're thinking of it and you think, oh, I would like to incorporate that as well, you can, you'll see some of the things I talk about in here, why that happens. So when I draw these um, electric lines, if for lack of a better uh, term, intuitive doodling, whatever you want to call it, I didn't go on top of the leaves because I wanted it to seem like it was a layer under the leaves. And so when you're looking at this piece, you have the two different uh, tissue paper layers that look like they're at different, different depths. And that has to do with the density of color and material on the tissue paper. So the, the one that didn't have as much decoration on it seems like it's um, at a different depth than the other one. And then the leaves seem to be at a, yet another depth. I'm using a Tombow uh, dual pen, a dual, dual brush marker. I really love these. I use these for so many different things. Um, I use the skinny side to sort of get my lines in and then I use the other side to come back and, and thicken and shape the uh, corners. It's so funny now looking back at that, there's a couple white spots where it's almost like the, there were holes in the tissue paper. I should have, I'm thinking now, oh, I should have colored those in with that Tombow. <laughs> so again, I'm going to try this, these delusion uh, paints. These were something that I had grabbed at a yard sale. I really love the color. I think they're past their lifetime. So the texture's a little off. I don't think they're supposed to be sort of like this pasty material, but I actually really like it as a paste. So uh, I don't know, I'm just adding in a little bit of that, giving it another layer, creating a little more depth. Now I'm coming in on top of the leaves and just sort of trying to make it feel like we have another layer to our piece. I'm going to experiment with a couple different colors on this. Um, but still trying to stick into my fall inspired palette. This one's really crumbly. This one doesn't work as well. So I'm like, oh, that's a real mess. But it's okay. It added some color. It's just adding a little bit to it. And so now I'm going to, there's a little bit of turquoise in this uh, paper that I had before. So I'm going to add a little bit here on the top just to bring that color back in. I really love that color. So now I'm going to eat, look, I'm almost out of this too. I'm almost out of everything. This is just a molding paste. It's just a, you know, a, a, a medium that's going to go on thick and dry thick. Um, just want to give a little bit of texture on top of the leaves just to complete out that layer uh, with the, the colored paste.
And then I'm going to add a little bit of this um, gilding gold that I absolutely love. I want this to feel like a, a layer on top of everything and a, like an additional depth. Um, I just love the, the intensity that it brings. not putting too much. I'm just hitting some areas. I'll tell you what, I'm going to order that gilding paste in every color next time. It wasn't too much money either. I think it was like seven or eight dollars for that jar, which I thought was pretty good. Okay, so I put it aside to dry, and now we're back again. And um, I feel like it needs um, contrast, and it really needs a pop layer to really uh, intensify the depth. So right now I'm thinking that I want to outline the leaves, so I'm doing that with a, a dual brush Tombow pen, just to make those a little more surface to feel higher up in the depth layers. I'm not sure if I really like this. I'm wondering if I should have done this before the um, Molding paste, I'm not sure. So I'm not super happy with it, so I'm gonna go around it with a with the Posca marker just to make it a little bit more bold. Again, I'm looking for that high contrast layer. Um, to really accentuate the depth. So at this point, I'm thinking about, I actually have to go off and get a material, which this is always going to happen because I can't possibly know what it is I'm going to want to use completely in advance. While I pull materials that I think I want to use in advance, I can't, I can't possibly have them all ready. So I know I just decided I want to use this um, stencil that feels a little, it's sort of like giraffe sh shapes, if you will. And I decide that I want to use this dark purple paint that I've been using that's left over from a project. So I'm getting that paint now. I'm getting a piece of parchment paper so that I can put the paint on there. And um, I'm going to use a, a sponge, which, of course, I couldn't find the sponge that I wanted to use. So I had to go round up a sponge. <laughs> Again, this is the real world of creating. Nothing goes perfect. Things are always a mess. And, you know, it, editing um, videos isn't really what I'm all about. I'm about creating art. <laughs> so, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to put the paint on the parchment paper. And we're going to use the sponge to dab the stencil. There we go. Okay. And I, you'll see that this is really where we start to see a difference and we, we start to see things pop. It just really adds a whole new interesting layer to everything.
So I'm just using, that's just a kitchen sponge. I'm, there's not, you know, we're not, no fancy tools here. I literally had to get it out of the cabinet and cut a piece off. Uh, I keep, you know, obviously new ones in the kitchen. So again, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm noticing in this particular video the consistency of me doing things in threes. I'm not sure if that was uh, something I learned. I did take uh, art classes in college. I have taken a lot of specialty um, courses. And uh, other than that, I'm largely self-taught. So I don't know if this is something I learned, if it's intuitive, if it just comes to me naturally or what the deal is. But something that I noticed that's very pleasing is doing things in threes. I think it makes an interesting composition. Um, actually, I do this in, in a fourth grouping, or I guess technically the two could have been, to, this one and that one could have been together as if they ran off the, the screen or the page together. So I would still call that three. In other words, if there were two stencils side by side, that little grouping I had just done to the left and this grouping would still be part of the same Okay, so now I'm really liking this addition and um, deciding what I want to do next because I really want those to pop out. So I'm thinking I'm going to use, um, it has to dry a little bit, so I do set, set it off to the side to dry for about an hour. And then this is, uh, I'm using a Posca metallic uh, gold uh, to outline the shapes, which is a good start, but it isn't giving me quite the punch I was looking for. It's a little challenging to go around these shapes because the, it's heavily textured and that purple paint, that deep purple paint that we used for the stencil has sand in it, uh, which I like the added element of that medium it does make it a little challenging to get a you know a line around there but that's okay i like the look that it's giving I'd love to hear your thoughts about the piece, uh, things you uh, liked that I did, or things that maybe you thought of adding that I didn't add, um, what you like about it, if you tried it, if you're going to try this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so I'm contemplating. I'm trying to let my intuition speak to me of what I want here. Um, and I de ultimately, I decide that I want to add in the black and white uh, Posca markers is where what I want because I know that's going to give me a pop. This particular one is a brand new one, so it needs to be... Oh, no, this, is a, this one doesn't work well. So I decide I need a different one, which is a new one, and it needs to be primed, so it's going to take a minute to prime it. You know, when you get those markers, you want to get the paint primed into the tip. It takes a few minutes... You know, you're shaking it and you're pressing down the tip to allow the paint to saturate the nib. Okay, so this is going better. I'm liking this is making this pop. I'm already thinking at this point that I'm going to come back and do another uh, outline around the gold, but I haven't totally decided yet.
just defining those shapes a little bit more. They're starting to really jump off the page, which is what I was after. Okay. So I am right here. I'm contemplating. Do I want to go back and go around the gold with the black? I'm debating. Do I want to use the same pen? And then I just jump in and do it. And then there, boom, they start to jump off the page. That's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. Great. Love it. I really love how this is coming together. I, again, another one that I sort of got worried in between there. Um, Just a tiny little detail makes such a difference. I'm realizing I forgot one at this point, but I think I realized that in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so now I want the white in there. Oh, see, I realized I've missed it right there. <laughs> so now I have that pop that I was looking for. So now I'm just going to come back in and give these a little bit of a highlight and then a shadow to help them really pop off and really seem like the depth of the piece is there. So I'm just highlighting them as if the light was uh, hitting that side of the page or coming from sort of the top right corner. Just a little tiny hint of white. There we go. And I'm getting a different color Tombow right now. So that there we go. I just want to put in some shadow around the pieces and that'll be the opposite side of the, the white that I just put in so that it looks like the, that layer, those shapes are really almost three dimensional, even though they're not is kind of what I was after here. That will really help create that dimension and interest and really drive home the depth. Tiny detail, but boy, does it make a difference. Okay, now I'm really loving this. And I'm just going to come back in and add some highlights. I'm putting in some white dots in the areas of the piece that maybe would be highlighted from light coming across. So the areas of the piece that are slightly lighter, I'm just accentuating that they're lighter. And then the same thing, I'm going to do black in the areas that are a little bit darker. I'm going to add in some darker dots to help visually make those areas lighter and darker, even though they're in a depth zone. So of course, the more dots that you put closer together, the in a, in, a, in a shading scale would appear darker, like if you were to squint or be at a distance. And then the less dots that you have farther apart, that it creates less shading. So 
So at this point, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done with the piece. I think I'm going to pull the tape. Uh, I'm getting my knife because we have multiple layers and thicknesses and all kinds of uh, mediums on there that dry hard and might make this hard to take the tape off. I love pulling the tape. It's almost like a ceremony for me. <laughs> a, a ritual. Oh, we have a big hawk outside. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, just finishing up with this tape here. I'm really pleased with this, which I don't realize until I take that picture. Taking the picture at the end really helps me to see it differently. It removes me from the creation part. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's experiment with creativity. For more, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me for more inspiration.